there's a huge uh, part of our society that's all related about health care, providing health care services to uh, friends and neighbors in the, in the community. Uh, the industry is a huge industry and I've had a wonderful opportunity in, in my career to be directly involved in uh, providing of health care services uh, to uh, our citizens and, and people that I, I know and those that many of them that I don't even know. So over the next uh, little while I want to share some of my experiences with you and walk you through several of my stops along the way as a health care professional. So this is the first stop of my, of my uh, professional career. I'm standing in the pharmacy department of one of the hospitals that I manage uh, as, a, as a hospital administrator. But 40 years ago, I graduated from Auburn University School of Pharmacy uh, and started uh, a career that I had no way of knowing, of course, uh, how it might turn out, but uh, uh, I practiced pharmacy for uh, several years. It was ingrained in me, even in pharmacy school, and some of my first jobs that I had as uh, some of my mentors, uh, that uh, as a healthcare professional, it's got to be all about the patient. And we're focused on helping people deal with medical issues uh, uh, in the case of uh, in the case of pharmacy, uh, helping them with medications that might uh, uh, get them through the issues that they're dealing with. So my next stop along the way was as a licensed nursing home administrator. But my experiences as a nursing home administrator are incredible. Uh, this is the time when in people's lives, as the elderly, when they're most needy for help when they're most dependent upon other professionals, other people, in addition to their own family, to help them get through life and, and the end of life issues that we as healthcare professionals experience on behalf of our patients and our residents in our communities. It's part of our society, it's part of our, of our community, and it's the right thing to do to provide good, high quality, safe environment for the elderly. And it's been a great experience for me. So the next stop in my career uh, has been as a hospital administrator. That's where I've spent most of my, my professional life um, as, as a hospital administrator. And this has been an incredible experience for me. I've had several opportunities to work with hospitals uh, and I've been, uh, been able to associate with a group of healthcare professionals as employees and people who work for me. Uh, they ranged everything from the most highly trained and most highly specialized physicians to entry level uh, GED educated employees who are just as valuable, just as committed, uh, just as passionate about helping us take care of and delivering services to patients and their families. It's been a wonderful experience for me to see people who uh, are committed to providing services to others people who, to others being our patients, who can't, and for the most part, can't help themselves. They have an illness, they have an injury, uh, that uh, they need the help of others. And so the helping part of that, the compassion that our employees show for our patients and their families has been something that I have particularly enjoyed observing, helping to make happen, and managing the process of delivering those health care services. I, we may be helping a young family bring a new baby into their, into their lives, in, into their family, or we may be caring for the, for the sickest, most complex illness or, and patients that are near death. We experience these things on a daily basis, but, but it has, I have observed so many of these people who work with me that have personal problems in their own life, of course, but they're committed and dedicated to the, to the industry of providing health care services to others. Okay, so now we uh, are in a rehabilitation hospital. We provide rehabilitation services uh, for patients who have had some major, major uh, uh, traumatic uh, issues with their body. And you talk about people with troubles and people with problems. Uh, our patients in this setting uh, have some of the biggest uh, mountains to climb. They, and you talk about people who need uh, the Lord and who need a prayer life and who need compassion and help and encouragement. Uh, these are some of our patients. I've seen some amazing things happen as, uh, as our uh, professionals, our rehabilitation nurses, our therapists uh, that are dealing with these families and their, mem and, and their fam these patients and their family members. Um, we uh, have members of our team uh, that are dealing with patients who have had traumatic brain injury, uh, spinal cord injuries, stroke, amputations, and a number of, of challenges in life. Uh, and it has brought back to me, personally, uh, again, 
uh, how important it is that we have uh, that we have God in our life, that we have committed our lives to glorifying God and, and using that to help us get through. These patients uh, here and the teammates that work for me and that I work with uh, are all about restoring quality to the lives of our patients. And we can do that. Uh, but we all know that it's more than that. And it will take more than that for us to maximize uh, what is expected of us as, as, as members of our community and as Christians as well. So this part of my life and part of my career uh, as I'm uh, approaching retirement has been uh, uh, very important to me and very meaningful to work with uh, patients and families that have these disabilities uh, and help them maximize uh, the rest of their, of their time. Healthcare professionals and people who work for us are certainly not immune to problems ourselves, personally. I might share with you that I'm standing in front of a cancer center uh, because I personally have experienced uh, cancer uh, it's an ugly disease. I hate it. I pray every day for, for a cure for cancer, but I've experienced it myself. In fact, I've got uh, a, a cancer called multiple myeloma, which is a blood cancer. Um, but I have had, uh, I've ex experienced as a patient the incredible research and progress that we're making toward treating and curing cancer. And I'm pleased to tell you, I've been blessed with great outcomes. And, uh, I'm basically uh, cancer free at this point and, and I have no concerns about moving on with the rest of my life. But I have personally observed and received the services of committed, dedicated and compassionate healthcare professionals who are helping folks uh, deal with problems in their lives, some of them quite serious problems obviously. Uh, and so I'm very grateful to have been able to be on the management side of providing services to others and also to, be, to successfully uh, dealt with health care issues personally and members of my family as well. But I do have to admit to you that as, as successful as my treatment has been and as, as wonderful as the people have been that have provided those services and provide the research and invented the new drugs and all the different techniques that were used to treat my cancer, that's really not enough for me. It was, it was not enough to rely on the progress and the success of our industry to help me get through this problem. I needed more than that, and my prayer life is what got me there. Uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a big believer in fervent, bold conversations with God to, uh, to get me and to help me get there. So all the technology, all the research, all the compassion that came from these people is not enough, and it's not enough for most people, and it shouldn't be. We should rely on the strength and the benefits that we get from an active, committed life as a Christian, uh, uh, using all the resources and the, and the strength and the wisdom that we can receive from our, from our Lord. My prayer life uh, has been sort of centered around James 5.16. It's kind of sort of become a, a theme uh, song for me, if you will. Uh, which basically my interpretation of that basically says fervent prayers of believers are powerful and effective. And I believe that we are expected and we're told in the scriptures to ask others, don't be hesitant to ask others to pray for you, pray for me, which I did. Uh, my friends have got, uh, got many opportunities and many requests for me and my family members to pray for me. And I, I probably didn't do even enough of that. But I think, it, I know it has been helpful and it is expected and it is needed and necessary uh, to add that uh, uh, and have that relationship with God and, and, and Christ. So you've heard a lot about, about me and my career and the people that I have been associated with and, and my, uh, some of my personal troubles that I, we've had. But I also have a lot in common with you. Uh, I'm also uh, trying to figure out what I'm going to do the rest of my uh, career. My uh, working life is about to come to an end. I'm going to be planning my retirement pretty soon and what I'm going to do the second half of my life and, and frankly asking the same question that many, many other people ask. What's next? What am I going to do next? Uh, I want the next part of my life to be significant, to contribute back to the communities and the people that I love. But at the same time, I want to do so in a way that, that glorifies God and do it in a way that uh, can be exciting uh, and also contribute to, uh, to, to God and His purpose. And, and uh, so I'm praying for that. Uh, I'm praying for answers. I'm praying for wisdom. The scriptures tell us if we don't know what to pray for, pray for wisdom. 
and that's what I'm going to do. One thing I do know, though, is this is going to be part of my, my life as I have more time and, and, and uh, to try to improve my golf game. I've got some golf buddies who are going to be in deep trouble as I, as I have new time to work on my golf game. But it's not about that. I need, I need more in my life than that. And so I'm, 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 I have great expectations that God is going to help me determine uh, what I can do to help glorify Him and, and contribute to the people that I love.